What's up guys? In this video I'm going to tell you about my first meal out of prison. And I'll tell you a little bit of the story as to what happened on that day of my release. So there was a big emotional build up to this day of release. All right. So I was uh, very anxious, very nervous, also afraid in some sense of being released because I realized that I had so much pressure on me and such an unbelievable uh, bad odds against me to succeed in life. So the other thing I had in mind also was I was very concerned up until I actually was freed from the prison that the federal government could have come in at any moment and charged me for some of the things that I already did state prison time for, just in a different sense. Uh, specifically some gun charges that I had. Uh, I've seen it happen before where the feds allow you to do your whole prison sentence in state prison and then come snatch you up right at the end and you don't go home at all. So that didn't happen for me, luckily. I'm very fortunate. But what did happen on that day was um, my now wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, was picking me up. I had a lot of people who wanted to pick me up, a lot of people who wanted to come down with her and do this big thing, and I didn't allow any of that to happen. I just wanted it to be her. She stayed with me throughout that whole time and suffered unimaginably with me uh, because of that decision to wait. So she deserved that by herself without anybody else there. So she was supposed to come pick me up. And this prison I got released from is uh, called Leesburg or Bayside State Prison. The town it's in is called Leesburg. And it's real far and remote from where I live. I live in northern New Jersey, very close to Manhattan. This is all the way in this southern part of New Jersey in the middle of nowhere, bumblefuck. So it took her hours to get down there. And something happened on that day where there was like a major accident on the way down. So she was delayed in traffic for a long time and there was nothing she could do about it. Now, I had already gone through the motions of getting released. They did my release photo. They gave me my property back. They gave me like $50 check or something that they gave me, some ridiculous bullshit. And I'm sorry, it was cash. It was $50 in cash that they gave me. And I think that's supposed to cover your bus ticket or whatever And if you can't arrange for someone to pick you up. So they ask you, you know, what are your plans? If you have somebody picking you up or if you want to get dropped off at the bus, bus stop. Uh, I told them that I had somebody coming. My girl's coming down. So I'll wait. There were like three or four of us getting released that day. And everybody's person, ride, showed up except mine. So because she was so backed up in this traffic, and remember, I didn't know what was happening because there's no cell phones. I couldn't make any calls. I was still in state custody at that time. But I was outside of the prison, like in a prison van. So they waited. They agreed to wait. They were being cool with me. I was like, let's just wait a little more, please. I don't want to, because they were telling me we had to leave here. We have to take you somewhere else and drop you somewhere else. And I'm telling them, look, I can't do that because I'm getting picked up from here. Just leave me here. Release me right now. And it's unbelievable that they wouldn't let me do that. They said they're not allowed to release me outside the prison where we were. I was like, I'm free already. I'm done with my sentence. Just let me go on my own. They said no. And I kept telling them that my girl's coming down. There's no way I can get in touch with her. And if I leave here now, we're going to miss each other. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. So they waited for some time, probably like another half hour or so, when finally they told me, look, there's nothing we can do. We got to take you. So you got to get in the get back in a prison van and we got to take you to the to the nearest bus stop. And which I didn't want to do. All I wanted to do was just stay there and I knew she was coming. So nevertheless, I didn't have a choice. They get me in the van, they take me to this bus stop in another town. Now I don't know where the fuck I am. And they just drop me there. I'm carrying two fucking laundry bags full of books, all right? And the bullshit outfit that they gave me. They gave me a pair of jeans and they gave me like a dress shirt. I think it was a white dress shirt that they gave me. So I'm at this bus stop now. I don't know where I am. I don't know what's happening. So I had to go break change for some money that I had to get changed because there was a pay phone I found at a gas station right near the bus stop. So I call her. I find out what's going on. She tells me the story. She's going to be like another half hour or so. I figure out where the fuck I am, give her the information. So fine. She's going to come get me from right around this bus stop. So I had time to kill. Okay, so by this time, it's already like the mid-afternoon. 
on the day of my release, I decided I'm not going to eat any state food. I was expecting her to pick me up, so I was like, fuck it, let me just keep my appetite. We'll eat real food. After, after years of eating this crap, I don't want this on my last day. So I was very hungry. So after I spoke to her, there was like a pizzeria I saw like maybe like half a block away while we were driving to the bus stop. So I decided to go over there. I walk over there. Pizza has always been one of my favorite foods. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to be upset that she's that I'm, you know, she's had me waiting and she got stuck. Whatever. I'm just going to eat this pizza and enjoy it and start my, my freedom in a good way. So I remember I walk into this pizza store. I'm carrying these bags and something so unusual happened to me. So this black lady comes up to me and she looks at me and she just came up to me and hugged me. And she said, welcome home, brother. That's what she said to me. And I was shocked. My first thought was like, damn, how the fuck does everybody know? But then I realized I'm carrying these big ass bags. And because the prison drops people off at that bus stop when they don't have a ride, I'm sure the people that are in that area are aware. They know the outfit. They see, they recognize them carrying fucking prison laundry bags. So I thought that was such a nice thing. You know, that was actually the first contact I'd had in so long hugging someone and it's this random lady who just came up to me and hugged me and welcomed me home and so it was really really cool that she did that uh, I'll never forget that so I thanked her we talked for a little bit and she went on her way and now I'm getting ready to order the pizza so I get the pizza I just got uh, two slices right and I don't know how this happened but for some reason I fucking rushed to eat it and I burned my mouth so bad on this pizza that I couldn't even eat the rest of it. My whole fucking mouth was numb. My tongue, the roof of my mouth was just burnt. So my first meal outside of prison fucked me up. And I couldn't enjoy it at all. And I think I, I'm sure I forced myself to eat the rest of it. But I was really fucked up. Like burned bad. I don't know how hot this pizza was. Or maybe I just wasn't used to having hot food in so long. But that was what I did. I fucked myself up on that slice, but my girl ended up showing up. We had a long drive back, and the crazy thing was is that I wasn't free to go home and just relax now. After this hours of driving and the whole process of the morning, which started at like 5 a.m. for them to release me, I had to report directly to my parole officer. And when I went to that parole officer, this piece of shit knew that my girl was outside waiting knew all the things I've gone through through the day, how early my day started, and that I wanted to go home, and made me sit there for six hours waiting. Six hours. I was the only one there waiting. There was nothing for him to be doing except talking to me and just to fuck with me. He was counting on me flipping out. He was counting on me not being able to handle that kind of disrespect and just flip the fuck out, and this piece of shit was wanting to and ready to send me right back to prison. So he made me wait this whole time. And while this is happening, I'm fucking fuming. I'm going outside to my girl every half hour or so. I'm apologizing to her. And I'm flipping the fuck out. And the conversation was bad. I was, like, furious about this. And thankfully, she was there for me. And she calmed me down. I was ready to choke this motherfucker. Fuck this freedom shit. I'm gonna fucking choke his ass right on his fucking desk for this disrespect that he did to me. But instead... I listened to what she said, she calmed me down and explained to me that this is what's going to happen, these people want you to go back to prison, of course she was right, so I calmed down, I waited, finally fucking went through the motions, I did what I had to do, and I went home, and I went home to a new uh, rental home that I'd never been in, been in before that my girl got for us. So it was a real crazy day, by the time I got home I was just like so out of it. You know, it was hard to believe that it was real. Like, part of me felt like I was still dreaming. And that feeling stayed with me for a long time. I always felt like it wasn't real. Like, I wake up and boom, I'm back in prison. So, I just thought I'd share this with you guys. I've never really spoken about the release and how it happened. So, here it is. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.